Facebook lead gen forms are one of my favorite type of conversion experiences across all the different paid media platforms. Depending on your industry and what you're offering, they can perform drastically better than a landing page form, and there's quite a bit of customization you can make within a lead gen form. Depending on your goals, whether you're trying to go for more volume or higher quality leads, there's a lot of customization you can do within the form itself to achieve those goals. So in today's video, we're going to walk through how to build a lead gen form in Facebook ads and talk about how to achieve your given optimization goal with each step. Over the course of this video, we're going to go through the process of creating a lead gen form. And as we get to each part, I'm going to talk about the different best practices that I've seen work well for each of those different sections of the lead gen form. But one thing you need to know going in is that there's usually one of two goals that people are trying to reach when they say they want to optimize their lead gen forms. They either want more volume of leads, they just want more people coming through, more people submitting the form, or they want better quality leads. They're likely already getting some leads, they're just not finding exactly the right people. Now these two goals can definitely be achieved by doing other actions in your Facebook campaigns, whether it's making changes to budget, your target audience, ad creative, anything like that. But for this video, we're going to focus just on the lead gen forms. And as we go through each of the different stages, I'll talk about each of these different goals and their optimization events separately when applicable. The first part is navigating to the lead gen forms in Facebook and they're going to be called instant forms in the interface. They're basically the same thing. Now you can either create these by going into your campaign, into the right ad set, going to the ad and creating a lead gen form from there. But the easiest way, and thankfully Facebook has made these a lot easier to find. So if you go over to all tools and then over in the manage portion, you'll find instant forms almost all the way down at the bottom. When we click on that, it brings us to the lead ads forms manager within Facebook ads. If you were to have any forms, you can see those would be populated here. They've also got a section for draft forms and the CRM setup. We're not going to talk about those today. I'm just going to talk about creating a new form. So we're going to go up here to this button, click on it, and now we're in the builder. Yes, I'm going to create a new form considering that this account does not have an existing form. But if you did and you just wanted to optimize based on that, you could click here, search from your forms library. All of your forms would populate here and you could choose which one you wanted to duplicate and then iterate on. Now let's click next. Whenever you create a new form, the first thing you have to do is choose the form type. And the nice part is these very easily align with the two optimization goals we've already talked about. The default option is going to be more volume. The goal here is to make sure that the form is very quick and they can submit it very easily. Very little friction with a more volume form type. Higher intent is intended to make there be at least a little bit of friction when somebody's filling out the form. Because when I click this button here, You'll notice down in the sections below, we now got a review screen added between privacy and completion. What this does is it gives the user a chance to review their information, understand that they are submitting their contact information to a company. And then additionally, on this review screen here, you'll notice down at the bottom that it says slide to submit. The user has to click the blue arrow, hold it and slide it all the way to the right to submit. If I go back to just a more volume form type, there is no section that has review screen on it. So there's nothing to slide. But additionally, the privacy policy information that is just before the completion set just says submit and it's just a button click. And then there's a message down below where that we'll get to in a little bit. And somebody's already submitted their information. So it's a very easy click rather than sliding the slider over to the right. So these are pretty self-explanatory. If you're trying to get more users to fill out the form, you probably want to stick with more volume. If you want to have more high quality users, more people who are actually ready to talk to you in the next step, fill out the form, you probably want to stick with higher intent. For the sake of this video, I'm going to leave it on more volume because there's not actually anything you can do on the review screen. So there's nothing to talk about strategy wise. Now let's move down into the second section, which is going to be the intro portion and talk about some strategies here. The first is your background image. Facebook gives you the opportunity to add an additional image that is 1200 by 628 pixels that will show up behind the icon over in the preview as an additional image up at the top of your lead gen form. I'm going to go ahead and upload something just so you can see how that'll populate. Well, unfortunately, Facebook won't actually show me what it's going to look like. But if you can imagine this title card for our YouTube channel showing up in the preview at the very top, just below the gray X in the upper right, 
but above the white box that's shown there. That's where that image would show up, but you don't have to upload a separate image. You can use the image that is from the ad itself and it will pre-populate that space and just look the exact same way it did on the actual ad itself. There's no real trick to these background images between more volume or higher intent. For me, the best practice with these background images is just to make sure that they help ground the user in where they are, what your call to action is, and what they're doing. If you don't have the design resources to build new images for each of these different forms, and you need to rely on the ones for your ads, that's probably fine. The ad was good enough to get the user to click. If they see the exact same ad show up in here, that's not a problem. If you have the ability to add an uploaded image, make sure that whatever imagery or small portions of text you use in that image help further your message. If you're trying to get more volume, it probably makes sense for you to make sure that your message is not limiting or qualifying and just is a positive, upbeat message that can be directed at all users. But if you're trying to get higher quality users, it might make sense for you to try and create some imagery that is a little bit more specific. If you're trying to sell medical software, but for some reason you have a lot of lawyers or financial users coming through and filling out the form, maybe put an image of doctors in this space to just further hammer home who this software is for. And even though you're not saying not for lawyers, you're still making it kind of apparent that this is for doctors. And the same type of best practice applies to the greeting down below. This is the second portion of the intro section and it is optional. You don't have to utilize this text if you don't want to, but for the most part, I always suggest that you should use something. You have a short headline that's 60 characters and then you can use either an open paragraph, which is gonna be the default, or if you choose list, you get five bullet points that you can utilize, each with 80 characters to help further your point. Again, if you want more volume, make this very welcoming, very easy, not very much friction. If you want higher quality, maybe start to utilize this text to say who you work well for and who you don't. Maybe you could put in some pricing details in here or talk about the size of company that your product or service fits. It doesn't have to be overt messaging, but anything even subtle can be really useful to make sure that you're qualifying the users before they even get to the next stage of the form. Overall, as a best practice, I would definitely say use the greeting because if nothing else, it just helps people understand maybe a little bit more about your business, a little bit more about your tone and become a little more familiar with you before filling out the form. The next section is going to be the questions portion of the form. It's gonna be right below intro. There are two categories of questions. The first one is a little small. It's going to be this questions portion here up at the top. And the second section is going to be pre-fill questions. Let's start with the pre-fill questions simply because they're the easiest. These are all going to ask the users for information. And there's lots of different categories you can use, whether you can see here the email, full name, but then you've also got these categories around contact fields, user information, which is kind of already there. That's why these are grayed out. Demographic information, work information. So you can get down to even work email, company name, or national identification number if you're in one of the locations that need to use that. And the reason that these are the easier sections is because of the name, pre-fill questions. That means that if Facebook knows this information about you, it will fill it out for you automatically in the form. And to sign up for Facebook, you need to have an email and you need to have a name. This form is the easiest form by far to fill out because Facebook does it for you. All this information is already pre-populated. There's nothing the user needs to do. For anybody looking to find more volume from their forms, I typically tell them to try and stick in the pre-fill questions section. That gives the user the opportunity to not have to do anything other than look at the information, make sure it's right, and then click continue no additional steps required. If you're trying to get higher quality, I recommend that maybe you use some pre-fill questions, but then you definitely leverage this section up here at the top around questions where you're able to ask more specific questions that are important to your business. So if we open this up, you can see that we have four different types of questions, multiple choice, short answer, conditional, and appointment request. Now I'm not gonna go through each of these. I think the most often used are going to be multiple choice and short answer. So let's just look at multiple choice just cause. Effectively here, you get to create your own question. You then get to add in the potential answers. You can see the preview for this question over here to the right. The user will read the question, click the answer that makes the most sense for them. 
But again, this is not something that Facebook could have filled out for them. So what are some thoughts around these custom questions? First, only ask questions that are actually useful to your business. Even if you're trying to pre-qualify users, scare off users who aren't quite the right fit for you, it's still a little egregious and can turn off the right users if you ask questions that are not useful at all. Odds are you probably have some understanding of what would be useful to your sales team to know in the sales process. But if you don't, maybe go talk to them, see what type of information they'd like to have already and ask it in the form itself. That way they don't have to do it on the call and you get a little bit of that pre-qualification. Now, the reason these work is because a user who is not quite ready to take the next step will find these questions invasive, they may not know the answer, and they try not to answer very many questions at all because they're just kind of window shopping. They really don't want a big commitment. But users who are qualified will know the answer to them, but also will understand that you need to know this information to help in the sales process. Whether it's software or working with an agency or something like that, the people who are trying to get this new partnership probably know that you need to know if they're trying to make a decision in less than a month or more than six months, they understand that that's a reasonable question. So just make sure that it's useful, give them enough options and leverage custom questions to try and help qualify users a little bit more. Now, another piece is this new feature up at the top, conditional logic. We toggle this on and I went ahead and switched the question type to short answer because for some reason, Facebook is not showing the conditional logic for the multiple choice the way it should, but I'll talk through that just in a second. But effectively, you get to ask the question that you wanna ask, and then based on the user's answer, you get to decide if they go to another question after this, if they submit the form, or if they close the form and don't give you their information. So for short answer, this doesn't make quite as much sense to me. If they answer the question and you want them to go to another question, you should probably just add a question from the drop down over here. If you want them to submit the form, you should just not ask any more questions and have them submit the form, whatever. But imagine this is a multiple choice question and you've given them the same four options that I gave you earlier, a timeline of less than one month, one to two months, three to six months or six months plus. Based on that, you might say that anybody who says less than one month you want them to submit the form, they're ready to go. Anybody between one to two or three to six months, anybody who answers any of the other timelines, maybe you go to additional questions to ask about budget, what type of information would be useful for them to get, to get them closer to being ready to make a purchase. And then depending on the answers to those, if they say they want more information, then have them submit the form, follow up with them with that information, and you'll be able to take action that way. Or if they say they don't want any more information, they wanna get out of this form, I'm not interested in purchasing, have them close the form, they won't submit their information, easy peasy. Now that person has automatically opted out and you've gotten rid of one more lower quality lead. So the conditional logic in these questions can be extremely useful for anybody trying to get higher quality users through their forms. That's not to say that you can't customize these to have users get more volume, but the more custom questions you ask and the more steps you have, the less likely you are to have more people filling out the form. You're just creating more friction every time you add an additional step. Now let's move down to the next section. The next step is going to be the privacy policy. Now, while it might not look like there's much to do here, there are some ways that you can customize this based on your goals. For those of you looking for more volume, simply add in your privacy policy link into the link field, make sure that everything is squared away there, and then don't customize anything else on this page. But if you need to adjust things for legal disclaimers and marketing opt-ins, or you simply wanna make sure that people know that you're probably gonna contact them again, you can use the custom disclaimer down here at the bottom, or you can add in the title, add in any text, and then you can add in additional consents that they need to have. This language could even be something as blatant as a checkbox that says, yes, I give paid media pros consent to contact me. Right now, it's a mandatory field. Somebody has to check that. But if you want it to, you can make it optional so they don't have to check it. But again, if you want to make sure that you're getting the high quality folks, having this box as mandatory will probably be something where you end up scaring off people who are just window shoppers. This is definitely one of the last types of strategies I would test for the high quality piece. I'd rather customize my questions to be useful and a little bit of time and attention consuming. But if you're finding that you're still having issues, this could be a great option. And then the last portion is going to be down in the end page. Each of these end pages is basically going to be the thank you page for your lead gen form. By default, you're gonna have an end page for leads, which is gonna give you the ability to name the end page, 
give a headline, give a short description, and then you have the different action that you wanna have down below, whether it's go to the website, download piece of content, call the business, you get to change your call to action, and then the link. Customize these based on somebody who submitted the form, but you can add additional end pages. I talked about this before. This is good to use if you want to give users an option who do not fill out the form. So here we have the same editing options. So this could be end page for people who abandon the form. You can then give them a headline, description, follow up with additional actions. You've got the call to action that you can customize and the link. But then when you're putting together all of your custom questions, if you have conditional logic on and you choose the next step, if they submit the form, you can then choose which page they see, either end page one, which is the page we just had for leads, or E2, which is the end page for abandoners. It'll show up up here at the top. And even though short answer isn't necessarily the right type of question I would use here, you can see how for a multiple choice question, somebody says, yes, I'm ready for you to contact me, send them to the end page for leads. Somebody who says, I need a little bit more information, that then the call to action is to send them to a certain page on the website that gives them the information they likely need to get a little bit more ready to convert. You could also create a third page that is anybody who just says, please don't contact me. You send them to that page. There is no follow-up action and then you're good. Overall, those are our best practices for Facebook lead gen forms. Make sure that you understand your form type, leverage the right type of messaging in the intro, use your questions strategically, whether it's pre-fill, custom questions, or if you use the conditional logic to walk the user through the process. Always provide a next step, even if it's somebody who wants to abandon the form, give them an easy out, but for everybody else, send them exactly where they need to go. Don't take them anywhere else. And then the last piece we haven't talked about yet is the follow-up always follow up with these users in the way that they expect. If they expect a sales call or an email, give that to them. If they want some additional piece of content or they tried to download something, make sure they have easy access to that and it's not a pain to get it. And then lastly, have these users go automatically into your CRM no matter what. Anybody who is ready to be contacted by sales should be a pretty hot lead status to make sure that they get followed up with. Anybody who wanted some content or some sort of mid or top funnel action, make sure that they're in a nurture sequence through your CRM. Follow up with them regularly. And then anybody who abandoned the form, keep their information too. That might be somebody to reach out to in a few months, or it could be somebody to completely block from your campaigns just as an easy exclusion list since they already opted out once. Most of these best practices will work for pretty much any platform that has a lead gen form, not just Facebook. But I really wanted to focus on Facebook today because that's where we get the most questions and they also have the form types which match up to the two different types of goals. If you have any additional questions about Facebook lead gen forms, lead gen forms on any platform or just lead generation strategy overall, let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up below. If you really liked it, maybe think about subscribing to the Paid Media Pros YouTube channel and you'll get alerted every time a new video drops. If you really, really liked it, you can help support the channel by checking out some of the t-shirts that we're wearing on our merch shelf, as well as looking at the super thanks button.